Today I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT to extract information from the web. Before we begin, I have a small, or in this context, a massive confession. I'm not a coder by any stretch of imagination, so I'm going to be improvising and interrogating ChatGPT to give me all of the answers I need. I only have a couple classes under my belt, Python and JavaScript, but I want to see what I can do as a complete beginner. At the end, it's not a rocket science. We're going to be using GPT-4 with browsing enabled, and this requires a premium plan, which honestly is my absolute favorite subscription out of everything I have. And if you do have ChatGPT+, you can go to settings over here, click on better features, and then here you have web browsing that's going to be enabled. So let's go ahead and start our web scraping project. I'm going to be scraping this page. This is a page that contains a bunch of different automations. Each automation has the title of the automation, the URL, and how much time it saves. So I'm going to copy this URL and come back to our chat GPT prompt over here. And let's do some prompt engineering. You're my coding assistant. Know that I'm a beginner, so I want to build a program to extract a list from the following page. Okay, here we have our response. We're going to be using HTML requests, and then we're going to be using beautiful soup to extract different elements from HTML. To explain what ChatGPT just suggested, it says that we're going to be extracting HTML of the page. You can right click on the page, click on inspect. So here you can see some HTML code for this given website. Essentially the way it works is that you have your client side, which is your browser, and then you have the server side, essentially the server where this website is hosted. And when you go to this URL, your client, your browser says, hey, is there any information at this destination? And then the server returns this code, which then gets translated into something that you see and something that you can interact with. So we're going to be extracting this code and then we're going to be using HTML parser. So we have a bunch of code over here. And we're going to go through this code and we're going to find the elements that we need. In our case, that's going to be the title, URL and time over there. Cool, so this is our approach, the very fundamental part. And finally, we're going to be using Python programming language to make all of this possible. So that's our game plan. Now let's get to business. Sounds like ChatGPT doesn't really want to inspect the web page, but I do have browsing enabled. So let me convince it if it can go through this page. You have browsing enabled. So find a list of repeating elements and try to extract title, URL, time, saved, variables. Do your best. Can you? <laughs> Some motivational words. You can do it. Bam. Yes! It's browsing the web. <laughs> I knew I could convince it. Now it's opening the link. And previously, whenever ChatGPT uses browsing, uh, you're going to see something like this. And then if you expand it, you'll see all of the actions that are happening. So it just went to this web page scroll down, read some context, and it finished browsing. So <laughs> there are some repeating elements, uh, such as get a list of LinkedIn group members. Wow. <laughs> they see me rolling. This is cool. This is amazing. This is exactly what I wanted to do. This looks fantastic. Here we have the skeleton of the code. So first we're importing requests, which will allow us to extract HTML. And then we're going to be using beautiful soup again to find the elements in that HTML code. Let me copy this information over here and I'm going to open my code editor. I'm going to be running all of this code from my code editor. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Jupyter, which allows you to run Python scripts block by block. I'm going to show you exactly what this means. So we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it chat GPT scraper. And then for a Jupyter notebook, uh, the extension is going to be dot I P Y and B. Okay. And if you don't have Jupyter installed yet, you can go to plugins and installed a Jupyter. It's obviously misspelled. So 
take note of that. So let's go back to our notebook over here. And the first block is just going to import requests and beautiful soup. Uh, you can go ahead and run it. And here you'll be asked for the environment to run this code in. Uh, I'm going to be using Anaconda. You can do a little bit of research to understand how to run Python and the environments. Use ChatGPT if you want to learn more. Okay, I already have this environment installed. Just like this, we imported beautiful soup. And I'm going to add another code block over here. Go back to chat GPT and see what we have. So download web page. So we specify the URL, then we're probably getting HTML and then we're grabbing text from there. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and um, paste this block over here. Let's run this. Here, what I'm going to do as a very beginner coder, I'm going to use print statements to just validate what we've just extracted. I'm going to grab response, whatever is inside that variable, and see how this looks like. So I've just printed response, and the response is 200, meaning that we can actually access uh, that page. And then uh, let's see print HTML content, and let's see what response text gets us. Okay, so the response is 200, meaning that the page was downloaded. And then here we have HTML code from that web page. Jupyter playbooks are amazing because we can see all of this. So let me comment this out. I'm going to hit command slash over there to comment uh, that guy out. And uh, let's go ahead and add an additional block over here. So right now we can be working with this HTML code. Now we just need to find valuable information in that HTML code. So step number two is to parse our HTML. So let's paste it over here. Then we're using a beautiful soup class for parsing. We're sending our web pages HTML over here, and then we're going to be using HTML parser from beautiful soup to extract some additional information. And this guy is called uh, soup. Cool. Let's see what's next. Okay, for step three, we need to identify tags and attributes of the information that we want to collect. Uh, this is a good step. I'm just going to add an additional code block, have it as a comment over here. And then it has some explanation. Here we have three different variables that we're trying to extract. We have uh, the title tags, we have the URL tags and time saved tags. I'm going to also copy it uh, to our coding block over there. And uh, let's see what we have. So we're using uh, soup and we're going to find all H3 uh, elements. And although I'm a good AI negotiator, ChatGPT still tells me to inspect elements to make sure that they are correct. So what we can do is we can go to this page and then we can right click on the element that we want to extract over there just to see how the element looks like. I'm going to hit inspect over there. And then let's see what we have. So we have a div block with class PB card name. Inside the div, we have another div with PB card text. And that text contains the information that we need. And when we scroll down a little bit below, here we have another div that actually contains the full name. It has class PB card text and hidden. And just because I'm a tiny bit lazy, I'm going to find the block above that contains all of the information we need. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it to ChatGPT. Something went wrong with ChatGPT, so I needed to regenerate the answers. And uh, ChatGPT is non-deterministic, meaning that if you ask the exact same thing multiple times, it's going to come up with different answers. Uh, so far, this code looks very similar. Uh, we just have a couple things that we want to take a look at and make sure that all the names are correct. So for example, here we need to find all the blocks representing playbooks. Playbooks are these uh, blocks over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code this time, go back here and replace that step three with our new approach. And for the class, I want to paste uh, PB card. And then uh, let's use our favorite print statements to see if this stuff looks good. Uh, okay, so uh, here we'll, pro we'll probably have the array of blocks like this. So I'm going to have uh, just the first uh, one of them. 
that I want to extract. So again, uh, here we have multiple blocks. I want to see uh, what's up in the first one. The areas soup is not defined. Uh, here it is defined. So I just need to run that block first. Of course, forgot to run it. Then I'm gonna run this guy one more time. Here it says list index is out of range. Maybe we didn't get a list. Uh, let's try running this guy one more time. And uh, there's nothing. And from here, let's try to get text. Oh, cannot get text. Let me just copy this uh, block uh, over here and feed it to uh, ChatGPT to see if it can help us. Can you check the correct class for the block? Okay. So here we have tag playbook card item. In this block, we have the title under a PB card name. In the A tag, we have the URL. And for time saved, we have this pill guy. Okay, I'm going to copy this line of code, uh, replace it over here, and then run the print statement. Playbook blocks. Okay, success. Now we have everything that that block contains. So that step is perfect. And then finally, I want to extract each one of the three elements. So uh, we are creating uh, here uh, a list. It's going to be called playbooks. So let me uh, do that. And then uh, we are saying, hey, for each one of those list items, uh, go through the block. This is the for loop. So if there are a thousand uh, playbook cards, elements like this, then that's how many times it's going to run uh, this code individually. So uh, there we have it. Okay, I'm going to copy this guy, uh, paste it over here, and let's try to deconstruct it. So first, we're going to get the title div, and inside that block right there, so block is the name. Inside that code block, we're going to find the playbook card name, and then we're going to add the title. And within that element, we're going to find text, which is the title. Uh, then we're going to do a similar thing for the URL. We're getting the href from this element. And then finally, we're grabbing that class pill to get our time saved. So time saved. And then when we run through each one of those blocks, we're going to have everything nicely generated. So we're going to have a list of items and each one of the items is going to have the title, the URL and time saved. Uh, this is perfect. AI, love your coding skills. This is a good beginning of my plan to dominate the human race. So by then we've created a list with all of the information extracted. And here we have the loop that will print each one of the list items. I'm going to edit as a separate code block over here. So for each one of the list items, for each one of the playbooks, it's going to print it once. Uh, let's go ahead and execute this code. I'm going to uh, define uh, this for loop right there. And it just went through everything. And then I'm going to print everything all right so there we have it there is uh, our list and there are unique titles uh, over there so what do you do from here what do you do with this data well uh, you need to create a csv a json file or a place where you want to store this and that's why we're going to go back to uh, chat gpt and ask to create a function to store this as a csv i want to store this information as a csv Okay, I only want the changed code. So it looks like we need to import uh, CSV uh, over there. So that's what I'm going to do. I can even import it at the very top over here and just rerun this coding block. That's why I like Jupyter Notebooks. And then finally, we'll add a new code block that will help us uh, save this list from above as a separate file. 
Sounds like ChatGPT refuses to modify our existing code, so it just rewrites the code, which I did not want. Um, so I'm going to ask it to create a separate function that will save the information as a CSV, as opposed to rewriting everything. So I have to untangle the mess of it all. So it just imports CSV right there, and then we are defining a function that takes in playbooks, and that creates a file name called playbooks.csv. Then it creates a writer, there's a writer header, then we loop through each one of the list items and pretty much turn it into a row in this CSV file. Because I imported uh, CSV already above, I'm just going to copy this write playbooks to CSV uh, over here. Let's paste this coding block, run this. So we have this function defined and add another coding block. And here we just need to initiate uh, that function to run. Uh, here we defined it, and now we just need to run it, and it's going to run through uh, this list that we already have. This is that list over there. So I'm just going to uh, actually go to files here, so you can see a new file created. And let's execute the script. And here we have a CSV. Looks like there are some problems. So title, URL, time saved. Let's see what the problem is. This actually contains fields, not in field names. Okay. Debugging can be also uh, pretty easy. So I'm just going to copy this error message without an explanation. See what ChatGPT says. My apologies for the oversight. Uh, here's the error. Uh, as you can see, uh, over here we have uh, titles that are capitalized. And then if we go a little bit above, here we're creating lowercase uh, parameters over there. So title, URL, and time saved. And that's exactly <laughs> what ChatGPT tried to fix. I already know this, so I can just do it manually. URL and uh, time saved. Scroll up a little bit. Yeah, time saved. Um, Instead of space, we have lowercase. And let's try to run it one more time. I'm going to delete this file so that it doesn't say it already exists. And let's go ahead and run this guy. Yes, no errors. Woo, <laughs> this is what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted. It worked, it worked, bam. Uh, okay, well, we have our CSV file. I'm going to uh, open it in the finder, reveal in the finder. And then I can even uh, go ahead and open up uh, spreadsheets. Import, upload. So under upload, let's find our finder. Here we have playbooks. And I'm going to drop it over here, replace existing sheet and visualize our data really nicely. Bam. All right. So there we have it. Uh, the title, <laughs> the URL, and uh, time saved. I wish I could say it took uh, a few minutes. It definitely didn't. And that was only for one website. So now I'm going to show you how to do this exact thing uh, with a tool called Bardeen and without any code in literally a minute. Check this out. I'm using Bardeen Chrome extension over here. I'm going to click on scrape, create a new scraper. Uh, we can scrape individual elements or we can scrape a list. In this case, I have a list. Let's give it a name, start building. And all I need to do is locate two of the same elements in the list. So we can do uh, this guy and that guy, for example. And then automatically, this is how we identify the list. You already know how this looks like in code. So I'm going to select this element and grab text from there. Uh, cool, there we have all of our names. Let's call it uh, names. And then uh, we can also grab the URL. So I can just uh, click over there and uh, grab the link that we want to get. Okay, uh, let's call it link. And then finally, I want uh, time saved. I don't want to see saved because that's pretty useless. So I'm just going to pick this element, click on uh, text element right there and call it time time saved. Uh, okay, just like this, uh, boom, there it is. There we have uh, the sheet. I'm going to click on automate. Uh, that's our scraper. Now we need to dump the information somewhere. I'm going to dump it into a spreadsheet. Let's add Google Spreadsheets like this, connect. 
Okay, there we have spreadsheets integrated. And now I want to add rows to Google Sheet. We're going to specify a Google Sheet every time we run this automation. And uh, finally, I want to dump the data from the previous action into that spreadsheet that I will specify. Click on done, click on done again. Uh, we're scraping this website. Uh, that's the automation. So here we are on the page, click once uh, from here. I can just create a new spreadsheet. Uh, let's call it uh, Demo Scraper. And just like this, we're creating a new spreadsheet. We're extracting all of the information from this website, just like this. And then I can click on View. Okay, and that's all of the information. I have exactly 100 items. And by the way, I'm not sure if you noticed, we had a little bug over there with both of the scraper where uh, two fields got combined it, get and a, so there's no space in between. Uh, here we have a line break and the elements are technically uh, different. So we have it both scrape with Bardeen and scrape um, using beautiful soup over there. I'm going to show you a quick fix on how to get this done properly. So I'm going to right click on this guy inspect and then in the inspector you see uh, the information so technically we've gotten uh, these uh, two fields that were combined and then if we could somehow get this playbook card text and then subclass hidden if we can get all of this stuff then uh, we can get uh, the stuff that is properly formatted so technically this information is an html code but it doesn't show up uh, visually because I guess the class is hidden. So what we can do is the following. Let me uh, close the inspect view, open up Bardeen. You can open up Bardeen from pretty much anywhere. Okay, and let's click on scraper. And then here I can just edit our scraper template. Uh, so sc scraper template informs where the elements are. And we can adjust the elements a little bit. As you can see, this preview data is wrong as well. So click on these three dots, edit. And then when you click on show advanced, you see all of the uh, selectors. This is how we identify which information we want to extract. So I'm going to delete all of those kind of like additional selectors that help us identify what we need to scrape. And then I'm going to paste this information here. I'm going to put dot over there. So I did uh, this class dot this class. And uh, just like this, uh, here we have uh, the correct information formatted really nicely. And by the way, so we scraped earlier just 100 items and then more items, you will see this guy minimize, more items get loaded as you scroll down, as you saw, there are more elements loaded. We couldn't do it with Beautiful Soup, but here with Bardeen, we can just click on Infinite Scroll. This is how we can get more elements uh, downloaded. Let's click on Save uh, right there. And then there we have our scraper template updated. Now, all we need to do is run this automation one more time. Let's create a new spreadsheet. Uh, let's call it New. Hit Enter, hit Enter again. And this page is going to get scraped. Boom, new spreadsheet, click on View. And now we have properly formatted text. And if we scroll all the way down, we scraped all 200 items. This was a scraper tutorial using ChatGPT by a complete noob. And I showed you a much easier way to extract information from websites. And in this video, we didn't even cover how to do pagination. So most of the lists are not going to be loaded with thousands of items. You need to follow page one by one and doing it in code takes way longer. So if you want to learn how to extract information from the web using Bardeen, make sure to click on this video next. This is the ultimate scraper tutorial. It's going to change the game for you. Click here, right there.